Well, like I can the best place to show your friends and get your gaming goodness each and every Monday. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me on the couch this week, Ashley Hodley. Hey, Dylan, excited to be here to talk about a chill week in video games. We love a wholesome direct. Also, here, Kira Marchant. Hi, there's games and trailers and stuff. Oh, my. There was no wholesome direct this week, by the way. There was an Xbox no. event. Wasn't that was wholesome. not wholesome. Well, it's not wholesome. I actually had some quite intense games. Anyway, mm. uh, yeah, today on the show, we'll talk about that the Xbox thing uh, and then uh, uh, pretty much a couple other things and uh, Magic the Gathering. Let's go! Yeah. Cardboard crack, but pixels. Biggest game of the week, Alan Wake. Who's played it? None of no. us. None of us. I got it. I got, I got, <laughs> it's installed. I got early quality critic score. It's currently sitting on our thing as a 9.8, so... That's based on how many Waiting rooms? on five. So oh. uh, I don't know if I'm going to wait anymore before putting it together. But, you know, it's either going to be a 10 or a 10. Is well, isn't your Nine threshold, points. isn't the rule five? Five, yes. Yeah. 9.8. Would that be the highest quality critic score? Well, it would round up to Didn't a 10. Didn't Final Fantasy. It round up to a 10. It Didn't would be Fantasy? Zelda. Zelda. Oh, Zelda. Okay. Um, I, I listened through the story of the first game. The other day on YouTube, I went to sleep. <laughs> you oh, like someone a recap? Yeah, yeah, somebody dictating what was it, breaking down and going into detail about it. Part of me was like, "Damn, kind of <sighs> seems all right to play," you know. But I'm sort of annoyed. I um, I, I ran out of time to finish my fucking live stream of the Pleasure. first game. Yeah, it's annoying. But... You ran out of time. I been... just stopped. No, I ran out of time. I just my my I, my um, I have an inability to schedule my fucking. There's too many things. Made time. Could have made no, time. Well, I think what fucked me is the website chain. I feel like that really fucked me. But at the same the time, time, if you were like played it, oh, months ago. Yeah, we the website changed. Yeah, so like months before two, you did weeks, the website yeah. change. If yeah, you, but like in my free time, I've been spending now. I've like we've we've sc- scrolled along to the point where I don't have free time anymore. Like it's just like the, I the, feel like the if days you just, off in your calendar. Just put like a block of like two hours. Well, then, no, this is then. this is what I, so my idea for I want to, and, and at this point, it's like we're in November now. It's like like. Like, let's be realistic. I would say my next year goal would to be: I need to get, I want to get a day in time and commit. Sounds good. <laughs> I want to. I'm, I'm hoping that next year when I'm back in a house with proper internet, I will be streaming some stuff and play some more games and stuff like that. Because hmm. I just, I just want to do it for fun, streaming. right? I just, I just want to stream for fun. I'm, I'm not, not going to commit. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to stream to like make that the like a huge part of the. Um, we should do a magic night. Yeah, we can do the magic night. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I would like to just stream as like a way to force myself to just play triple A weird or off stuff stuff. But fuck no, 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 no. You uh, play the weird. You play the weird and off stuff anyway. It's the triple A games you need. Incentive yeah, we'll play the triple A games that I need to play. And, yeah, and stuff there like we that. go. But old ones is what I'm hearing. But old you know, ones, the ones you've stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, well, I need to fix it. Yeah. So. Anyway, anyway, that's a that's a that's that's sort of where we're at. I mean, if you moved into a better house, then I'd just say that then it would be way easier to commit to a day because then I'd be like, let's not have a day each like we tried to do years ago. It'd be like, let's just make sure at least one of us stream. Every, yeah, the same no, day it's week. it's I've hmm. yeah, we'll be some point next year in a better house with MBN. Hmm. MBN, and I'm gonna pay for like light speed MBN because natural broadband network. N- natural? Do you mean national? Yeah, whatever. There we go. It's, it's definitely not natural. It's too slow. Far from fucking natural, even when they put copper in it. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's go over the Xbox Partner Showcase. Uh, I woke up at stupid o'clock to watch this thing in full. <laughs> um, it was fine. I thought I thought it was all... I, I, like, if they do more of these, I'm totally for it. Basically, the pitch is Xbox is like, here's a half-hour show, just trailers back-to-back, no people talking of... Uh, third-party developers and companies that we're teaming up with. Um, none of the ones we've brought. They're like, here's all the ones we haven't brought yet and games <laughs> that these people are working on. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically how the, the show played out. Um, did anyone else... Has anyone else either... Did either of you watch the thing in full? No, obviously, I, I know neither of you woke up to watch it. Did either of you watch it in full or have you at least watched all the trailers? I watched it in full this morning. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I did a, like, while I was doing something else watch, so... Fair enough. Yeah. And solid, or? Well, it yeah. was okay. Yeah, it was I didn't think it was anything to write home about, but it was all right. It well, was a really home. good I wrote, I wrote to explosionnetwork.com. 
<laughs> it was a direct state of play, that is. Yeah. That's better than state of play. When's the last time we had a good state of play? Oh. The last one. Ho, ho. Last one was fine. I don't think it was like let's let's calm down. We're at seven point nine. Yeah, you know? that's what this was. <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is probably on the same level. Like, exactly. Like, that's what whatever. You said. Did you? I thought you said you, the state of play was better. I was like, I can't do well, it. in general, they're better because you know they're PlayStation. But fuck, guy over here. All right. So the games <laughs> that they showed, uh, just running through them here because most of them. I think we're pretty cool. Uh, started with Yakuza. Sorry, fuck. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. Uh, got a. Now this is the weirdest fucking shit I have seen in so long. It is a bonus, at least from my understanding. It's like a bonus section of the game, not bonus at all. Like it's you can spend as much time here as you want, like optional or whatever. But they're basically like his Animal Crossing crossed with Like a Dragon, and you can just like build up your home and social and whatever else on this island. It is the weirdest, wackiest shit and the most Yakuza thing ever, I guess. Uh, Ash, what'd you, <laughs> what'd you make of this? I mean, I'm, bo- I'm, I'm super on board, you know, like a dragon uh, had like a super in-depth management game that you could play. So if they've got a similar kind of thing here, uh, I'm on, all on board. Let me build my hotel. Yeah, I believe you'll you want to ride with the dolphins. That. You probably can. Wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think this was a normal trailer. And now that I've experienced like a dragon, like uh, this is a normal trailer for Yakuza and such like a dragon with, um, yeah, with how in depth that business management game is in the original, like a dragon, this is not a surprise. It almost feels normal that Yakuza such like a dragon games have a random section that has really no, direct impact on the main game but is very in-depth and very <laughs> uh, full it's of like content a couple of the devs were like i really want to make this uh animal crossing game but i really like this full-time job so i'm just going to put it in this game <laughs> yep because this this seems ridiculously in, in depth the further the trailer went on the more i was like <laughs> are you fucking for real like, like it just it's kept like growing, and growing, growing. <laughs> yeah, like the, every this is bonus content. It looks like it's better than Fallout seventy six. Like, it's just <laughs> it was like mid gone and like, like mid like yeah, yeah. Good shit though. Uh, so then we got Ikari will not die. So this is a new game from Future Lab, which I really, really like their Velocity games, especially Velocity 2X. Uh, and then also I also mentioned here in a new story, they did VR games like Tiny Tracks. Um, so very keen on this. Uh, not much. This is one of two new game announcements that was actually in this show. Uh, so it very much just looks like a roguelike, a third person roguelike. Um, it was giving me, I guess, returnal esque vibes, but obviously a little bit different to that. But like the idea of a third person um, roguelike sort of thing super fast paced like their velocity games are or, or something like that um i'm keen to find out more because i like to develop it, so uh then we got still wakes the deep uh the new narrative horror game i guess from the chinese room uh fucking creepy man like i put here you know this is this was a lot to watch at 4 a.m in the morning with headphones on I'm sitting here watching this trailer, <laughs> just hearing like that the, the section where they're like roaming around, and there's a person like whispering in the background and whatever else. And I was like, "No, like I'm I'm not awake enough <laughs> for whatever's going on here." Uh, Ash is not going to care for this at all. Touch it. For, he probably skipped this trailer. It wouldn't surprise me. When's so. the Meg hit? When's the Meg hit? No, fuck off. Uh, I just realized what you were trying <laughs> to say. Get out of here, Kieran. Did you? When's the Megalodon show up? <laughs> what, do you care for this at all? Um. I, I, I don't know about care for it. I think I'd be interested in it, but there was nothing amazing in this trailer that stood out to me and really grabbed me in terms of this is the next big thing in terms of horror and suspense gameplay. Um, it just seemed like a lot of first person climbing ladders and walking down spooky corridors. And well, I mean, to clarify, these are the people that made um, Amnesia, a machine for pigs, which was the more narrative walking simulator esque on that and then they, after that they made everybody's gone to the rapture so yes which yeah, yeah that fits in then perfectly yeah. yeah 
Uh, the get off my screen, motherfucker. Uh, we then got Robocop Rogue City got a new trailer. Uh, I'm more and more surprised. I feel like people's interest in this game has grown a lot in the last sort of couple months, especially after they put out a demo. I didn't try a demo myself, but old reports say it's just like it's actually pretty good. The the gameplay. They're not taking it super serious. They're, they're, they're well aware that this is like this 80 franchise that has like a, you know, like it was massive when, the, the, you know, these movies, were, well, I don't say massive, like it was super popular when it came out. Like when I hit a certain age, my dad was like, man, we're going to, like, you, you're old enough, you can watch Robocop now. And like, <laughs> it was sort of like a, you know, like a dude bro sort of movie. But mm. I feel like the game, from all reports, the game's like not taking the franchise super serious and knows what it is. So, um, but this trailer is one of the more action packed ones, I guess, that, that so far. I mean, does anyone, has, uh, I assume Ash, have, have either of you watched Robocop? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yes. I, you have? Yeah. Okay, I'm surprised. For me, it's in the same. For me, it's in the same. For me, it was like in the same vein as like Terminator 2. I don't know why. Like, I always grouped. No, in Robocop. fact, Terminator 2 is a, a classic film in Robocop. No, but when I was movie. a kid growing up. <laughs> Seminal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, they were both the action y movies with robotic robots. protagonists. <laughs> one's a oh. cop and one's a. All neighbor. robots are the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Fair enough. Oh, this is out like next week, so. I, yeah. I was really confused by this trailer because some this aspects week, of this trailer I thought looked really good and other aspects of this trailer looked like real, like, double A title bad. Yeah, well, it is like double A title. I know so. it's double A, but like sometimes it was like, oh, this looks really cool. Like some of the character, um, where it was like introducing different, I guess, gangs or aspects of characters in the in the game, and I was like, oh, okay, this looks really cool. And then the gameplay, I was like, ooh, maybe, maybe not. Mm. I don't know. Well, I mean, for everything I've heard, the gunplay is like pretty average. But yeah. the people enjoying the RPG aspects of the game, I guess. Uh, we then got a new trailer for the Dungeons of Hinterberg, uh, focusing on the social side of the game. I like this. I like this this game they revealed at the last Xbox event or whatever, and it looked really cool. But I like in this how they show that outside of exploring the dungeons and stuff uh, and the, the combat and everything like that, when you're coming back to the town, they're, 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 they're tying in the social aspects of the game that you have to participate if you want your character to grow um as you build these relationships with characters around town you'll you'll unlock uh, abilities that you may not care about like stuff like photo mode but then other stuff like your your health and whatever else will grow as you build your relationship with these characters i think that looks pretty cool i really like the art style of this game still so i thought some of the dialogue was not <laughs> great in this game i don't know that was when i was watching it i was like the there was one character that was like Oh, I see you choose a sword as your weapon of choice. Why is that? And I was like, Oh, okay, that's that's a that's interesting. Uh, I mean, it's very like anime. This I wouldn't even say that's too. anime. I don't know. It just seemed. I mean, if that dog was in a Far Fantasy game, no one would blink an eye. I feel like it's just the. <laughs> I don't feel like they would. They would. I don't feel like anyone would blink if that was in a Far Fantasy game. That dialogue was probably in Far Fantasy sixteen. You know, so most likely, yeah. <laughs> Can't go an episode. Can't go a week without shitting on that game. <laughs> um, the- <laughs> you fucking played it. My God. <laughs> yeah, and it's so it's so played it. People. It gives me so much position permission to just consistently shit on it. Uh, Spirit of the North 2 was then announced. So this is, yeah, a sequel to Spirit of the North. Uh, you're, it looks like you're playing as a different fox, and this fox has a, a crow or something, or some sort of bird as a friend um, in this one. It looks very pretty, running on Unreal Engine 5 that pops up at the end, you know, so... Um, I haven't played the first one. Uh, I don't think any of us have. So, but I don't know. Did anyone think this trailer looked cool or anything? Or... Uh, no, nah, fuck foxes. Didn't really know. grab. Didn't really grab me. All about the red pandas yeah. up here. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. I think got a new trailer showcasing the environments and Unreal Engine Five for this one. Um, looks, you know, Unreal Engine Five looks real good. I, I guess it's Does the... anybody else get right? There has been a big conversation this week about this trailer because it doesn't have any of the the yellowy iconic or... moments. Or... Oh. Not not even iconic moments, but like to me, all the conversations need to be about the art direction of this game and how hmm. um, art fidelity and graphical de- fidelity isn't as good as the direction of the original one and like how I, it's lacking because it doesn't have that yellow grain or like the, the I don't think it's the yellow grain. It's scale. just like, I, I agree to a point. Like, I think this trailer, the game looks really pretty. It, the, the trailer does a good job at showcasing like how, you know, like 
Unreal Engine 5. It's going to make the, you know, the forest and all that. Like, there's very, like, there's a lot of, like, volumetric to the data in this between the grass and the fucking whatever else. However, I do agree that this is a trailer that's just very much like looks like it's a nature documentary, the way it's like put out and progressed. Um, whereas the the it, people were comparing it to shots of the the real game and cutscenes and stuff. And you know, Hideo Kojima is a cinematographer, a, a film buff at heart, and he has a lot of thought. Like he has a lot of direction to how he angles and like. The, but it's not just. You can usually tell the difference, like a video game cutscene is just like someone who has no idea about like shooting film because it's just like the camera is here and there's a dude here, you know, like there's no thought process into framing or anything like that. Whereas K- Kojima has that. So, like, I get that. I don't think that like the yellow tint or whatever, I'm like, uh, I don't know if that was part of it, but like, I, I do get half the discussion. But with that said, I would still be like, this trailer was very much just, hey, look how pretty our game is. And I wouldn't judge the this trailer on if the game is able to hold some of that same cinematic aspect or not. I don't feel like it's at all, like, you can't really compare. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, We then got Manor Lords. So I'd never heard of this game before, but uh, so it's a game where you, like, build up a whole, I don't know, like 1800s or whatever um, group of people. And I don't know. Like, this looks like something you might play, Ash. I don't know. Uh, the medieval one or whatever you build yeah, town and you can like protect sure. it and no it's like a <laughs> it looks like um city Cylons medieval edition yeah i mean there's a lot of like humans fighting each other in this there's like some like, yeah a lot of swords i would shields. say it looks almost a bit closer i guess maybe with some more detailed building than crusader kings and stuff like that yeah, yeah. or maybe like that yeah. midway point between crusader kings and like age of empires Hmm. Uh, so it's coming to game preview for Windows uh, April 26, 2024 and they, they, they did also announce that console launch will come eventually down the line we then got a trailer for the finals so this is a game we've seen a few trailers for I'm consistently confused about if it's actually real gameplay footage or not but I mean it looks really good like visually when it's played um, I have no idea if the game is actually fun to play or not there was a like open beta or closed beta or whatever that happened I think the the, this weekend or something like that it was happening so um yeah i don't know like kim what what, what do you think of this because obviously the game's been marketed as this like you know 3v3 or whatever it is team-based um competitive esports sort of like, very much like you're like this game has been marketed as our games are fucking should be an esport sort of thing so i i dislike any game that is purpose built to be an esport if that makes sense because i feel like it's almost doomed never to reach that height. Like, I feel like mm. uh, so many great games are about the game first and then later down the track evolve into an esports. Like, like I kind of, I think Rocket League is like the great example where Rocket League is an amazing esports now, but it's got such a player base because of its early years of, of how they built Rocket League of, you know, Rocket League going out on PS plus um, and kind of how it built itself. I think, any any developer to me that goes out and says, "Oh, this is going to be an esports. I'm building this in mind with esports in mind." I think it always just falls short and it never really reaches that height or establishes itself as an esport because nobody cares about the game enough at that point. Yeah, that's right. Game eat shit and die. <laughs> um, what do you think though? Outside that, <laughs> um, I. I... I thought it was all right. I think, I think, I think, it, I don't know. I think I'm struggling with a lot of these games at the moment in terms of the roller derby ones that have come out, the the foam stars or whatever the fuck that was. The we love foam stars. What are you talking um, about? Foam stars. Like, there's so many of these games that come out that kind of you could see that they, they have some kind of idea of this could be a multiplayer phenomenon and then they just fall short. I feel like ever since we've had like the Fall Guys Fortnite era, they've been teams kind of trying to achieve that again and they're just not doing it very well and i just think this falls into that mediocre bucket for me fair enough uh then go trailer for arc survival ascended so this is like the remake remaster of the first arc game uh looks a lot better this is sure um the one no. This is not the Vin Diesel this one. The thing that got me is watching it on YouTube, like live, the chat from the moment this 
show started because I guess maybe in a tweet they said this game would be in the show. It was just people spamming Acer, 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 like the entire show, no matter what trailer showed up. So um, people were apparently excited for this. I know this is Ark has a massive fan base, whatever. Um, from all reports, so the, they put out the trailer and then they they like sort of shadow dropped it. So the game is out now, early access. Um, the big thing for this one is that it has um, cross mod support so console players are going to get the same mod support for this as pc players and um 400 plus mods whatever else um running on unreal engine 5 of course it looks really, really good uh it launched in a bit of a mess i know someone i work with like brought it day one and then like stopped playing because he, he's like i got a good computer but it was running at like 15 frames per second um he was telling me today that's like they've sort of like fixed most issues and he says if he turned off he went to the options and just turned off clouds and he got like an extra 20, 20 frames per second so. Shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah, so yeah um yeah dinosaurs anyone care for dinosaurs uh not enough to go back and play the remaster like i'd much i'd probably jump in dark too but not the remaster. yeah vin diesel yeah family gotta wait gotta wait for the family boy that's right uh, then we got Alan Wake 2 to close out the show. So they Ooh. did a launch trailer release for it. That was very cool. And then they dropped a little bit of um, uh, new Saga uh, gameplay for it. So that was, yeah. And obviously talking about at the start of the show, all reviews for Alan Wake 2 have pretty much been, this is one of the best games of the year, phenomenal, blah, 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 yep. blah, blah. Also, I'm going to say the one thing that even though I haven't had a chance to play it yet, I'm, the, the amount of times I've heard some variation of, Oh man, I didn't realize this game would be that good. Like all this sort of stuff. I, I'm a little bit confused. Like, have I been living on another wavelength? Because every single time they've shown a trailer for this, I've come on here and like I know I listen to a couple podcasts where I've also had people like myself who are like, "Fucking, I'm like, two looks so good." And then then the game drops and people are like, "Man, I didn't realize." I was like, "Well, I think I don't know why. I think people are struggling to connect Alan Wake." as a franchise even though it was directly correct it's, not, it's the remedy it's the it's the no no, no but this is what i'm saying right universe. even though it had a fucking expansion people are struggling to connect alan wake to control and i think if more people understood that control is like the game that's pre predecessing this game you would already expect this game to be good even though i gave this game shit expected it to be good no matter what it was going to do what the game mm. did like it's it's Control was that fucking good and that impressive from a gameplay aspect and a story aspect that you just have to expect them to do the same with Alan Wake. I feel like Remedy, bar Quantum Break, I think is at a point now where it's got goodwill, where it should be recognized as if Remedy is releasing a game, it's going to be great. Like I, yeah, I, I'm, I've, I've seen a few comments where people have said like Control was like, for a lot of people that was a game that got a lot of people in and then people have been saying like alan wake 2 is the game that's finally got like remedy at like the stage where now people start like remembering their name and paying more attention and like growing up in the ps2 era, like i fucking love the max Payne games max Payne the one and two was they were amazing and i and i would love for them to get their grubby hands they're on remaking them. yeah i know um, they're, they're remaking yeah. max Payne. so yeah like to to hmm. to play max Payne again and have that properly in this in the remedy universe would be fucking amazing like it's it's exciting um yeah i i think remedy is just a studio that you should just expect good quality games to come out of except for uh no i'm thinking of ninja theory so no it's fine <laughs> <laughs> i was almost about to be like except for that random arena melee game they play no, and i was like no it's ninja no. theory that was hellblade no it's just yeah. thinking it's, uh, hellblade it's back yeah. up on yep yeah. yep you yeah. know they've made control and alan wake and yeah literally the only game that people question them on is quantum break which, quantum break. Mentioned, so. which for all at for which all was accounts bold. was was, was like yeah was ambitious and had a tv show connected to it and is it because yeah. of the time gap between the two games? And also the people Alan Wake know that they've been trying to, try yeah. and, trying to make a sequel to Alan Wake for a long well, time. Well, I think Alan Wake was such a weird, uh, not a weird game, but I think Alan Wake was a niche game. Alan Wake was like one of those games that had yeah. such a, a cult following um, that I think a lot of people didn't play Alan Wake or they played Alan Wake, but they only played like the first like I feel like it was a thick like, section. So the, the reason I got, like I remember reading whatever magazine some magazine, gaming magazine, when I was a teenager, when that game was coming out, wrote about it and said, man, this game's like, it's basically like Stephen King, the video game 
that's like not based on anything and i remember being like oh man i can't wait to play this but i didn't I didn't own an xbox so like i played it through with a friend at his house and stuff like that and we were both like big into horror movies and like stephen king and all this sort of stuff so like maybe it just spoke to us as like more of a thing and maybe like just general video game fan like it was a little bit too well, weird like the it, monologuing and the the epi- like the, even that still does episodic breakdowns like you finish a chapter of alan wake it ends it goes credits song plays and then like it goes previously on like it still does all these yes yeah these episodic things i think and i think even when i've kind of watched or listened to the breakdown of that game that game's got a fucking remedy r story to it like it is yep yeah it is fucking all over the place and confusing and how important the dlc is to um and and this is where i'm Part of me wants to play Adam Wake 2, but at the same time, I feel like I <laughs> would be doing it a disservice if I didn't go back and play Adam Wake 1. I, see, I'm not even, like, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not going to bother tr- going back and finishing my playthrough. With the, the but you've already, so you've finished I'll a playthrough of Adam Wake once. That's true, before, I guess. Right? Like, I've while. never done that. All I've done is listen but to I mean, it, but I have I, never. I don't think you need to bother. From, from everything I've read and, like, based upon, like, the trailers and stuff for the game, and everything i don't think it, i don't think you need to have played alan even Wake just to play this even just um the funny thing was and i guess this is where maybe the trailer was the thing we were listening to what the story was and how alan wake finished as a the, the alan wake game finished it may spoil how alan wake one finishes like we're talking about the sequels out now if you want to like mention something like well i, 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 I guess i guess like, the 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 way alan wake finishes is that alan wake is stuck in this dark zone or this dark place the or dark whatever. place yeah the dark the place lake. and he's been writing the story the entire time and, and whatever and so when this game starts he is still in that dark place and he is writing yeah. as far as we know and i guess that was the yeah. That was the confusing thing. Not the confusing thing, but that was like the intriguing thing when I watched the Alan Wake 2 trailer was like this thing where like, oh, Alan Wake's writing this character, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, oh, now that I have the context of knowing what happened in the first game, I I guess it's even more intriguing because I guess that initial, what I thought was going to be the intriguing part of the game has already been revealed. So, and I, I guess I saw a lot of conversation about that where I just felt like if people had context of the first game, they'd have understood the trailers a little bit more. Possibly, I guess. But I mean, yeah, so the thing is, like, it's literally just like, there's a dude stuck in a place where he's, like, forced to, like, continue writing stories. And one of his, this stories come to life. And then you've got an FBI agent, or whatever they're called, not FB, FBC, whatever they are, agent who's investigating this cult thing that's happening in the real world. But the cult thing is presumably just, like, being caused by Alan White. So... That's how their like story is going to intermingle. Yeah. Like it's that's pretty much I like without having played Alan Wake 2, that's my that's how I've taken the story set up as. And then you've like then you're gonna bring in the control element, which is like control introduces the idea of these, you know, like basically haunted, whatever the, the wording is, I can't remember it's been a while, but you know, the objects, and then it's like, okay, so like is Alan Wake's not really the cause. Like, is it the book that he's writing in that's like causing? You know what I mean? Like, because the yes. like that's uh, control's whole thing is about objects that have these powers, and you know. So, well, it's a typewriter he's writing on. Yeah, the typewriter. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. is it is the typewriter the cause? Basically, you know. So, that's that's the road we go down. And then, like after this, they've already confirmed they're going to make it Control Two, and then maybe they'll make Alan Wake Three. Maybe they tie in a different game to the universe. Yeah, that's I'm really excited. I think Remedy like they've spent so many years like building towards this point and now they're like sort of like because they're like self-publishing and all that sort of stuff they're free and they're, they're just building their own universe it's yeah it's pretty cool Ash. hit me with yes. the one quality critic score for this week that's actually up not the one you said may or may that's not be up gone. soon yes. um quality critics score for ghost runner 2 Ghost Runner 2 got an 8 uh, uh, quality critic scale. Uh, what are right. The quality critics are mostly favorable towards the Ghost Runner sequel, with the action being up to the standard of the first game and the sound and visuals being top quality. A few critics found that the game often found ways to slow your momentum, both in gameplay with the parry system that actually stops you and with the story where you visit the council between missions. Uh, the new motorcycle was also divisive among critics, with some enjoying the fast-paced action sequences it provided, while others found it difficult to handle. 
Uh, it was also worth noting that a lot of story elements from the first game are mentioned and referenced too often, so it would be best to get a refresher from a recap video online as the one in the game was not regarded as being up to snuff. So, yeah. So I played like an hour or so, a couple of hours, I think, of Ghost Runner yes. 2. Um, so far, it's fine. It's just more of the first game. Just more. Um, which is fine to a degree, but I totally get what they're like. I'm already I, a couple hours in. I'm already like, why the fuck am I coming back to this stupid hub world to talk to people? Like the first game just had such a like just good pacing of building up, up yeah. massive like like they would elevate the action pieces, action pieces to a, the two eventual boss fight, and then you would like sort of slow it back down, and then to build up to the next boss fight. Like there was, there was sort of no major downtime, and like they basically tried to inject more story. Um, yes. narrative into this game to the point that I'm like, I don't know if I actually needed this. Like, the world in the first game was cool, but it was like, the reason that the game was so good was its gameplay and like the the the, the world building around you was the was, was enough. I, di- I didn't need like a, a, a strict, more basic, normal video game narrative of like having to mm. talk to characters in the hub, hub area and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, still keen to play more, obviously, but it's a lot. It's just yeah. so many video games at the moment. <laughs> it is. It, yeah. It's also interesting. A couple of reviewers hadn't played the first one or pl- played minimal amounts. So, yeah. Okay. Um, that's kind of why the recap was <laughs> brought up. Yeah, the recap though. at the start sucks. Um, I quickly had to quickly reread the Wikipedia synopsis and then, like, ha- yeah. actually having played it, that was enough for me to be like, oh, that's right. That, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's what that means. That's what that word and that person's name is and stuff like that. But yeah, th- I feel like just the-, the game dives so heavy into like narrative stuff that it's like, even if you've played the first game, you're like, what? Yeah, this, <laughs> Have I missed this something? Like, stuff was so unimportant in the first game. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't paying enough attention. Like, I thought the game was just about me, like, killing people, which I'm like yeah. climbing a tower. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Did it. Uh, also, people really like that they've added like a score leaderboard system in the game as well. Yeah, yeah which, after every level uh, now. Yeah. So if you also, there's like a scores. roguelike mode as well. I don't know if you've I don't know if that's like reached a that. I don't yeah. think I've seen that, no. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah. Soundtrack's still a bang it. Do so. Got that. Mm. Uh, one review up for this week. So, shout outs to Will. Got up a review of Hellboy Web of Weird. Um, he gave it a five and a half. Says, when played in short bursts, Hellboy Web of Weird is a strangely compelling game, mostly thanks to its characters and defining art style, doing a lot of heavy lifting. Despite its lack of compelling gameplay systems, there is something about the simplicity presented that offers some comfort in how you play the game. And the right person might still find some enjoyment in exploring the weird. Uh, so, yeah, he basically says the game is looks cool sounds cool but gameplay becomes a bit like repetitive is sort of what i got out of his review like there's not enough meat on the bone here to 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 make it stick around but i mean i love the art style and everything like i was watching some video i watched some quick gameplay videos that have been put out since the game's out now on the fly um yeah the art style in motion just looks so much like the comic book i love that they've yeah. committed hard to the, yeah. the, the proper comic book style yeah that's what kind of makes it so disappointing to hear that like, I feel like it, not just will like a lot of people have said you know it's been pretty repetitive like and that kind of stuff yeah a couple Hellboy games now have committed to the original like the Dark Horse art style for Hellboy and Hellboy? yeah I feel like this has to be the second one now I can remember one Xbox 360 era and I feel yeah. like they've both sucked both times <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like, <laughs> which is really disappointing. Hear. Which is really disappointing because Hellboy is such an in- intriguing um, franchise, a title, and then the art style is so great. Um, it just sucks that, that the games are just falling short each time. All right, and finally this week, let's talk about. Some magic the gatherings. So, I think last week was it last week on the show off the show. I can't remember. I can't remember. If, I'd never remember. I think it was on the show last week. Not. I think times a blur. Yeah. Podcasts are a blur. Mm. Yeah, is there one in front of me, or are we just talking? Who knows? Mm. Um, saying like you, you'd say you dived into some magic gathering um, arena and stuff like that. Uh, this and then today I see you tweeting about hating uh, toxic and standard and stuff like that. So you've done your Kieran thing of 
poked your finger in something and then just fallen right in, you know? Yeah, like, so, yeah, yeah 100%. Going hardcore. Yeah, no. Spent um, 40 grand on cards is what I'm saying. I have 16 commander no, decks no, no, no. and I have two moderns <laughs> underwear. No, 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 no. Um, so this week I've played 30 hours. Holy of fuck. magic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to balance so I can use it in my studies. This is the thing, right? This is the thing. This is where all my hours will go for studying, right? Is I won't put 30 hours in a week to magic. Um uh, yeah, no, you the think? only I've only spent I have spent fifteen dollars. Yeah, fifteen dollars yeah, just fine. to get like the starter bundles because they were cheap and they give you some gems and stuff and some packs to start with. Um wait, wait, wait. this is in the game, not the physical not Copies in the game. Off. I don't he's want. He's playing. He's, he's playing. I don't want to, You know what? Now. If I lived once again, if I lived okay. in Melbourne, I would probably get into physical because I live in Shepparton and I'm not a fan of the only game um, place we have in Shep. I'm good. Um, Shade. Yeah, it is a bit. Uh, I'm I'm good. It's not my crowd. Um, it's a good games there, right? Not the problem on the bus, but uh, no, it's not. No, 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 no. no. It will, no, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> it is not. If it was good games, it'd probably Shepparton be good. Shepparton Game Store. <laughs> it would not be hard to find. Um, but, you yeah, know, um, I've been really loving it. I think I've been, like, in the weeds this week learning what the fuck alchemy is as a format. Um, it's pretty cool, right? No. No. No? Sounds, it's, no, like, alchemy. cheap and easy to get into. No. 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 I wouldn't even say it's cheap and easy. Like, it's... it. Alchemy is magic if they could release patches. alchemy's magic if they could release patches to patch cards and change what cards do the Mm. problem with that is though is that you if if you buy it like in-game purchase a card or use your mild cards to individually get certain cards and then they change that card you get no refund on it you get no change to it if they nerf it into the ground and make it a useless card you get no recourse to it. Um, it has a shorter lifespan than anything else. I think there's only like four sets or something in Alchemy. I understand it is, it's just a bit sketchy that that's what they are kind of pushing when it comes to when you start Magic the the Arena. Oh, like, to clarify, this is what they're pushing on Arena. This arena, is yeah. So because this is it's an it's an Arena only format because yeah, of course they can't change cards in real life. Um. So it's an arena format. It's what they push when you start the game. And I think it took me doing some learning to understand what exactly alchemy is. And because I'm, I've always been a standard boy. Um, I'd love, I'm getting to the point where I'd, I'd actually, and this is where me watching modern on YouTube a little bit more, not modern commander on YouTube. I'd love to have friends that play commander and just fuck around with commander. So you, the thing is you, you've, you've never, have you never played commander when you played magic? I played commander, but I've only ever played commander uh in pre-builds like i've only ever like they yeah, okay. commander got big again when i was playing like started to get yeah. big again from a so like, I, I, every f and m night i used to go to it was like after the event was over it would be like all right we're playing commander now yeah like, yeah no no no. it was never like that for for us at least here in shep so um i've always been a standard boy so i've started playing standard again it's fucking insane so um I guess they've increased the amount of years that sets are in rotation now. So the amount of like possible cards in rotation for standard is fucking massive. And when I was playing magic, toxic was just a modern, um, was only in modern. It was not in all other, like it wasn't in standard format because I hadn't, and I'd always dreaded it. And then I've come back and toxic's one of the mechanics involved again. I'm like, Oh fuck. And I just, just toxic nerds are the worst fucking little dorks. Um, it's because it's because it's a they the current like main set has a bunch of Phyrexian monsters in it. And yeah, that's like what brings brings the mechanic. So you've sort of come back in when a bunch of Phyrexian creatures just rampage through the Magic the Gathering universe. And yes, um, but no, I'm toxic all over it. I'm excited for uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, which comes out in like two weeks, um, like the fourteenth of November. And to clarify, I think. When you say toxic was the thing of modern, it would have been infect that you were. Infect, I'm thinking of. Yeah, sorry, yes. I'm thinking of infect. toxic is like a new version of infect. And for people who listen, you know, how is it any magic. different? Um, I feel like it's exactly the I same. I don't as think infect. it. I don't think it. Oh no, it doesn't. Do, it doesn't. Um, uh, it, do, it only does players. It doesn't do creatures. 
Oh, okay, right. Fair enough. I, I think it's the difference. I may or may not be wrong. But for people who don't know anything about magic, here's my quick rundown of why Karen's annoyed. Um, so in magic, you have 20 life, and obviously if creatures hit you, 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 use, you lose life counters and stuff. So toxic and, and or infect are abilities that cause creatures to not deal normal health damage to you. They deal uh, infect or poison damage instead. And if you reach 10 poison or infect counters, you lose the game. So you only have to do like half the amount of normal damage. Um, and a lot of people build really shit decks where they put cards on creatures that make them unblockable and lots of like and even like shit. um <laughs> uh is it prophilate proliferate where it, yeah, prophilate, it yeah. adds, they like, adds the counter adds the counter to, to it it's yeah. the so they, they put one poison counter on you and then they proliferate the poison counter so they don't even have to hit you anymore yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's cool. and it's just like fucking <laughs> shit yeah. Yeah. um but no i, I toxic is a shit mechanic but i'm having fun it's fun there's there's I love it. The deep down magic will never change. You'll always get those fucking games. And I had one today where you'll be playing like a control player, like a, a blue control player. And somehow they will have an answer for every card you try and play. Yeah. Counter spell. They'll, they'll have a billion counter spells and a Kill billion. Kill just, that. Yeah. It's just like, I, you just like, oh, okay. I don't want to play the game anyway. I just, I'll try and play games. Um, <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying drafting. Drafting is hard. Cause I guess, it's really interesting in draft because drafting in arena, you don't play against the players that you drafted with. Oh, uh, you do, depending on which one you're playing. Depending. I played Premier, but even in Premier, you don't. I thought Premier is the one where you can see the table next year. Well, there was a mode where you can see the players. In next Premier, year, like you there. can see the players that yeah. you're drafting with. That's because yeah. you're drafting. Quick draft is bots, but when you actually yeah. go to play games, you just get put in the draft pool. You don't. You don't play inside because so it's yeah. not like. But, but when you're drafting with real people, so like you can still do. So again, I feel like I'm just, I'm going to do a bunch of like just for people listening to. It. Mm-hmm. So drafting and Magic the Gathering is um is a format where it's usually like eight people sit around a table. Um, you have three booster packs in front of you, and you open the booster pack. You take one card from it. You pass the pack to your left, and obviously you. Re- you receive a pack from your right. Um, you pass those, you pass it around in a circle, you take one card, um, then you open the next two boosters following through. The idea is obviously to build a good deck with the cards you're taking one one at a time. When you're playing with real people though, compared to the, the mode where you just draft against bots, is you can still, when you get hardcore, into, not hardcore, but when you get like at least decent at drafting, the idea is that you'll be able to tell what the person to your right is probably drafting by telling what, or, or, or at least the next not the next somewhere in the like vicinity of the next couple players next year because you start by the second pack being like there's no fucking red cards in this yeah pack, all like the reds disappearing three. all the blues disappearing yeah so okay. someone over here is taking all the red and i'm not going to do red anymore because it's all going to be gone by the time it gets to me so that's where like drafting real, with real people gets a bit more like but then even like, like that and that does happen in premiere but it's when it comes to actually playing the games at least when you're playing in like a draft pool in real life, there is only a limited amount of decks you can kind of come up against. And there's only been like a finite amount of cards realistically that could be. Whereas you can, it is so easy in fucking draft for you to press play and come up against a mirror match where somebody's built roughly the same mechanic as you, which doesn't always happen or is harder to happen when you're drafting in the same pool because there's only limited amount of cards for that style of play i guess um but no i'm loving magic at the minute like of course i am fuck if i played 30 hours and then turn around and said i fucking hate magic um that'd be fucking masochistic um but no it's um it's been yeah it's been a lot of fun uh, and i'm enjoying it so you're going to buy some physical cards and no oh, okay <laughs> I, I i will never buy boosters ever again if i ever get back into magic i will just buy decks from like card kingdom or mtg how about the mathering gathering uh marvel set that was announced this week you see mm, mm, not a massive fan fan, but it's it's parks in the next set that comes out yeah i know yeah i know life will uh find a way 
Also, the, the drafting will change as of next year. The, there was a story out this week. Uh, you can read about it on ExplosionNetwork.com where um, they're, ch- <laughs> the, uh, they're changing, they're getting rid of the set and draft boosters um, because at the moment, a couple of years ago, they, 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 because years ago, you only had one type of booster. It was just like, here's the booster. You open it and you can draft with it and you can just open them, yes. whatever. There's yeah. one type of booster. And a couple of years ago, we're like, they, they overhauled the entire system. They're like, there's now set boosters. There is play boosters. There is draft boosters. There is collector's boosters. They're like, just added all these different types of boosters to really make it confusing and the hardest fact to know what, what you're supposed to buy um so they're changing that now and they're introducing what's called play boosters so these are to, to try and meet in the middle of both being fun to open for collectors and still being a lot more um draftable basically is how it's going to work so you'll have play boosters and collectors boosters there'll only be two at least from my understanding there'll only be two types of boosters going forward so yeah my fun magic news for you this week all right they'll do it <laughs> for the show this week of course let us know any comments questions concerns things you've got to say over on our discord explosion network.com slash discord you can zeet your tweet and yeet your way at us if you like explosion network.com slash twitter takes you there and if you like this episode and want to support us go donate over at our Kofi page explosion network.com slash supports takes you to our Kofi page and you can donate as little as a dollar over there to help keep the lights and mics on we'll see you here same time same couch next week as we enter the silly season crazy november gaming is coming up <laughs> wow goodbye <laughs>